Jason here, God bless each and every one of you. Going to do a video today, today, excuse me, on hopefully what I find will be beneficial to you. And in these last times, we have the apostate church. And that what that is, is many wrong doctrines, many false preachers, and um, they are nothing but wolves in sheep clothing. And they deceive the flock, They're, and they are ob obviously vain in nature, Often self-glorification or, or gratification is involved with them. And they lead whole houses and families and, and people to to false doctrines and, and damn them. I condemn them, and we'll talk about that today. If you're new to the channel, subscribe, thumbs up. Join us. We're a group of Bible-believing Christians. We're waiting for our blessed hope, the rapture, the soon return of Jesus Christ, the King in the clouds, to ever be with him. And how do, you, how do you join us? And how do you go to heaven eternally forever? Well, it's simple. It's a free gift. Jesus Christ, God himself, came down in man's form, died on a cross about 2,000 years ago, laid down his life as, a, as according to the good news, which is the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He, he died, never sinned, was buried and rose from the dead three days later. So why did he make this free gift available? Because he loves you. And why did he die for you? Because he wants you to spend eternity in heaven rather than in hell. And what do you need to do? Believe with your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is God, is the Son of God, and he died for you. And his blood was shed to forgive you for past, present, future sins. It's eternal security, a free gift, it's, and that's a heart belief. So accept that free gift of salvation today, my friends. Going to take a look. We're going to be in Titus chapter 1 and chapter 2 for the most part. Going to start out with Titus 2, 8. And sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary, so opposite of, of the sound speech, part may be ashamed, having no evil thing to say of you. And so we should have sound speech. We should have sound doctrine. We have the word of God, which is our sword. And we should run to, if you're looking at English, it's the KJV Bible. In other languages, it's it's different. But we're not to, you know, to run to wrong doctrine. We're not to listen to people with that don't focus on the Word of God. When you watch my videos, I want you to look at the verses. I don't want you just to trust me. But I rather the verses. It's the Word of God. It's inspired through through men, and it was preserved. Word of God through the KJV. You know, the KJV was the seventh English version of the Bible that came about. And it is, of course, God uses sevens, as we know. It was also the seventh language that the Bible was translated into. So another reason to believe the KJV Bible, the 1611, you know, version, not the, not the New King James Version. Let's go back to Titus 1, and we'll start at verse 10. For there are many unruly and vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision. So let's unpack verse verse 10. Vain talkers and unruly, they stand out to me. You know, vain talkers are people that 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 seek themselves highly, more highly than they should, and they and I would say they're unruly because they make their own interpretations of the Bible, of God's law, of how to be saved today. And they, here it mentions the circumcision, right? So back here in a, the AD times, you probably had Jews mixed in with the church. But they make, they make themselves out to be more than they are, maybe more like gods, you know, their own gods. You know, the, certain religions are very popular today because it allows you to believe what you want. It actually makes you... Uh, a lot of people want to choose who their God is and what, what they're like and the characteristics of it. Well, that's not the way it works. God is eternal. God is God is perfect. God is who God is. You can't change him. In fact, he's a spirit. He's not even a man. But he did come down in man's form in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness and remission of our sins. Amen. Sort of sounds like Genesis 6, you know, where the sons of God came down. They left their estate and they wanted to self-glorify themselves with and with the lust of, of the flesh and with being considered it to be worshipped and idolized. I just think of verse 11, whose mouth must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not, for filthy luckers sake. So, so they, they need to be stopped. They need to be called out. Verse 11, they, and they subvert what? Whole houses. 
well, that's scary. They teach they teach things they should not they that they ought not. They're and again they are, you know they are filthy. Um, you know they wrong doctrine, damning souls. Imagine imagine having a people who really want to know the Lord, really want to know God, and then they take that gift and that desire and they and they 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 pervert it. They make it filthy. They make it unruly. And they teach things that they ought not. Verse 12, one of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said, the Cretans, so this is an example that Paul is using, um, are always liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies. So, of course, they lie. They're evil inside. And slow bellies is an interesting word there. Um, you know, slow bellies means obese or make fat. And if you look at Ephesians 4.22, they corrupt, you know, according to the, their deceitful lust. And I'm sure that's what these Cretans were like. And it's a great representation, you know, of a church back then that um, is similar to a lot of the churches today. And I would think it's about 98% of churches today are corrupt, uh, often just trying to fill their own bellies and, and with money and to make money. It's about money, right? And that's not what salvation is about. It's not being a member. It's not giving tithings. Yes, those things can be great to serve the Lord if used properly, but often the churches. Do not use them, you know, properly. And we're to rebuke them. You know, we are to rebuke these people. Let's look at verse 13. The witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply, that they may be sound in the faith. So, you know, we are called out to, to call them out. So 2 Thessalonians 3.15. Let's turn over to there. We'll just a couple chapters before. Yet count him not as an enemy, but a admonish him as a brother so you know these are people that that you know don't obey the word right that, that have wrong doctrine um they're to be you know to be ashamed so do we call them out you know do we call them out harshly or do we do it in love i think a lot of that depends upon you know the motive of the individual you know sometimes you know new christians don't know the truth sometimes people can you know have we maybe have a bad day or, or have a good heart and, and, and should be saying one thing and, and, and they say something different or they're, or they're just confused and they need to learn more. Right. That's why I mentioned a new Christian. Um, often new Christians get confused when they don't rightly divide the word of truth, according to second Timothy two fifteen, And so it's easy to, you know, have, have more compassion for them. But somebody, for example, who has been a pastor of a church for 30 years and yet doesn't want to teach, um, proper salvation or doesn't want to edify the flock with, you know, the rapture or doesn't want to talk about Genesis 6 or doesn't want to be truthful. They just want to do devotional studies or, you know, talk about love and, and social justice of today's world. They should be, I think, harshly rebuked because that's part of the problem. You know, the church is at fault and, and, and the way the church has developed and we have failed as Christians. You know, we have failed this, this world that needs a savior. And Jesus is asking you to right the ship, to call things out, to, to live boldly. Um, use the Holy Spirit in you. Remember, the Holy Spirit's going to do the work for you, but you need to call an apple an apple, call an orange an orange. And if somebody is leading or misleading people in an unruly way, as we looked at first uh, Titus, you know, excuse me, Titus chapter one, in an unruly way, you know, that's only made to make themselves fat or rich. That really, truly doesn't, you know, glorify God or Jesus, but rather has self, self value, you know, preservation. Want to want to want to prop themselves up, and then and then they again they, they um they twist and they lie and they're evil internally. That that group we should not have any, you know, kind words for essentially, and we should call them out. If nothing else, just straighten them out, uh, to expose them if they are. Uh, indeed, it saved themselves. Anyway, uh, I pray for each and every one of you. Salvation is simple. A heart belief on the blood of Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross 2,000 years ago for the remission and forgiveness of all your sins. Nothing else added, lest any man can boast. Believe, with, believe on that today because we're still in the church age and time is short. God bless and have a great day.